Welcome to this integrated math one practice test for 10 ready question number 23 in the 2017-18 version. Now in 2016-17 they had this exact same question the only difference was they didn't have multiple choice answers and I realized that I'd gone through and explained all of it and it's much easier to see what I'm doing on the larger picture that they provided because back then you had to use different tools to graph now it's multiple choice so I'm going to create this intro uh, which I should say that the only way I could get my old video because I deleted the original file was to use Firefox and download it with an add-on I'm, I'm sure nobody's ever done that before but anyway I basically stole my own video it's in the Creative Commons who cares anyway back to this in a second once I get the answer for the old video I'll kick back into this and I'll wrap up how you pick the correct answer choice. Karen is buying supplies for a party, doesn't say what type. She plans to spend at least $100 on food and at least $50 on party favors. She can spend no more than a total of $250 on food or and party favors. So, so that's her budget, $250. Graph the solution set to the amount of money Karen can spend on food and party favors and spend no more than $250. So we're going to make one statement about food, we're going to make one statement about party favors, and we're going to make one statement about uh, the maximum amount that we're allowed to spend. Now, in order to understand the relationship here in the grid, you might say that uh, these are dollars amounts, and we'll say this one is food, it doesn't really matter. dollars of food or price of food or something and for here we'll have dollars of party favors I'm assuming like there's this little things that you uh, blow air into and they make the noise or whatever they probably had the Power Rangers on them that's like that's the kind of party that uh, I'm, I'm envisioning something at Chuck E. Cheese or something. Anyway, I need to make a statement that shows that I can't, I can only spend a hundred dollars on food. Now the grid is an important component of this, obviously. What does each represent? Well this, each point on the graph, so say I have this point right here, this point says something very specific about what's going on at that party. It tells me that eighty dollars are being spent on food and a hundred dollars are being spent on party favors that's an important component because it's going to tell me where I'm going to make uh, possible limits for each thing. I have a limit of a hundred dollars on food so what I'm going to do is almost create uh, a line there that will tell me, or I guess it's a segment in this case, it's not going to go on forever that's for sure, um, that will allow me to show at a hundred dollars. So here's a hundred, there's my line for food. I can't buy any more than that. That's the, oh, sorry, at least $100. So so this is the minimum amount I'm going to spend on food. These these people will not be eating three cheese crackers. And that's all. It's better than 100 unless there's a ton of people coming. Uh, she also wants to spend at least $50 on party favors. So I'm going to set my lower limit there as well. So $50 is right here. So I want to draw that line. So in this area, this is where uh, my possible amounts of money could spend if I had unlimited budget all the way up to here where I'd be spending $280 on um, both party favors and food. The problem is she has a budget limit of $250. So I need to find a point at $250 which is right here because this point would indicate that she spent $250 on party favors and nothing on food. So I hope you like those little noisemakers for Power Rangers. Down here would be all food, no party favors. I, I don't know, even what I'd prefer. I guess it depends on where it is. So I'm going to draw a line to connect those two points. Right here. Anywhere under here would represent all her budget possibilities. Even our original 180 would fall into the possible range. Now the final answer is a little bit more um, specific than that. The part where they overlap, and this is going to shift those things a little bit, and I forgot about that part, so I'm going to go and uh, 
make an adjustment to this so that it changes. So right in here, this part in the middle represents all of the possible dollar spending situations that Karen could align herself in. And that is my final answer. That's the solution set. Not down here where I made a mistake. Sorry about that. Whoopsie. Just in this point through here. Click, click, click. All of that. So there you go. All possible. Uh, she could spend $130 on food and $80 on party favors and still meet her requirements. As little as this, as much as this, and maximize all within that little zone of answers. That's it. Let me not quite lay quite all that's it but there's a little bit more so now we have to look at answer choices one thing I should say about answer choices is be careful to pick the right one when you go to the answer document I tend to see this as A B C and D some people don't they'll see it A B C D or in this case uh, M, R, P, S. Just make sure that you pick the right number because it's really easy to get this one wrong even do, though you do all the work. To make this, I don't know if it's, if it's meta or not, I don't think it is. Um, I'll just bring up the editing software screen so you could see. If I roll this back a little, let me show. Okay, so it's right there. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. So matches up perfectly. The other one's, uh, this one's nowhere near, it's being shaded incorrectly, this one's being shaded incorrectly. This one's just not uh, far enough down, it's just, it looks like it, so if I graphed it I guess it would seem like that would be the thing that I would do, um, but it's not in the correct location. So match everything up, and our final answer for number 23 is R.